we, we've reached a stage in which Lebanon's foreign policy has become damage control. For weeks, a diplomatic row has been escalating between Saudi Arabia and Lebanon. In an interview that aired in late October, George Qardahi, Lebanon's information minister, criticized the Saudi-led war in Yemen while defending the Iran-backed Houthi rebels. Qardahi's comments enraged Saudi Arabia and several of its Gulf allies. Alongside Bahrain, Kuwait, and the UAE, Saudi Arabia pulled its envoy and banned all imports from Lebanon, a country already in the midst of a terrifying economic crisis. From Beirut, we speak with Dr. Mahenad al Haj Ali, research fellow at Carnegie Middle East Center, about how he sees this crisis and if there are any ways out. I think what, what the Lebanese government wants, wants is to stop, you know, the Saudi escalation, pose it. This doesn't mean a resumption of relations, and it doesn't mean what Lebanon had with the Gulf prior to these uh, upheavals will, uh, will return to normal. This is not the case. You know, uh, the Lebanese government wants to just pose and stop uh, the escalatory measures. Uh, from reaching such a uh, dangerous or critical phase. Especially that we're hearing also rumors about potential freeze on um, all transfers, all money transfers to Lebanon. But the crisis has been ongoing. I mean, this is a sort of a buildup that we've seen and, you know, starting a decade ago when um, when Saad Hadi resigned and then the Mikati government uh, took over. Um, and then the Syrian crisis and Hezbollah's participation in the Syrian crisis kind of increased tensions. On one hand, um, you know, the, uh, the Mohammed bin Salman administration, kind of, you know, the alliance, with the Trump administration, there was the viewpoint, the politics that we've seen, the maximum pressure campaign on Iran, in which there was a um, the concept of, you know, the only way to deal with Hezbollah is to deal with Lebanon and punish Lebanon as a state. And, and that didn't work, you know. <laughs> and I, but I, I think still to this, you know, you can see signs of this policy continuing um, in the GCC kind of uh, approach vis-a-vis -vis Lebanon, that, you know, um, designating all of Lebanon as responsible for Hezbollah's actions uh, would kind of lead to cornering Hezbollah and, and changing or shifting uh, the policy in another direction. And the second thing that happened is, you know, the Hariri Sega, Saad Hariri um, and uh, Sega in Saudi Arabia in, in November 2017. And there, there was a clear kind of uh, policy, which is um, that Saad Hariri is no longer Saudi Arabia's man, if anything, He's an unwanted figure in Lebanese politics. And he was seen as part of the old Saudi establishment, um, uh, which uh, you know needs to be sidelined. And I think the first reaction by the PM was like, let's let Qurdahi resign, you know, as, as, a, as a first reaction. Of course, Hezbollah there kind of pushed back. And there comes in the different calculations in the country. You know, for Hezbollah, for instance, blaming Saudi Arabia for the political crisis as an easy way out of the elections, you know. Um, and also there's the, uh, what Hezbollah was making publicly, uh, you know, the point that they were making that if Qurdahi resigns, not only this is humiliating uh, for the Lebanese, uh, you know, government and the Lebanese state, but, but also it sets a precedent that no one is allowed to say their mind uh, in public about any regional issue uh, if if these views are not aligned with Saudi Arabia. If there's a clear you know, result of the Saudi campaign, it is basically demonstrating how much influence Saudi Arabia has over Lebanon. You know, Lebanon is connected to the Gulf, you know, has massive interests in, 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 in the relationship with the Gulf. Hundreds of thousands of, of Lebanese 
uh, expats living in the Gulf, transferring uh, money in, into Lebanon. And there's also, you know, Lebanese exports uh, going into, you know, various Gulf countries. You know, what we're seeing is a, is a really complex situation in which Lebanon, Lebanon's relations uh, with, the, with the region is also an extension, extension of, of Iran's relations with the region. Um, if Iran is, is uh, pursuing a kind of an aggressive uh, anti-GCC policy, uh, you know, Lebanon will be um, a part of, of, that, of that Iranian strategy. And how can the state or what's left of it, um, you know, contain the damage done I don't think the, the the Lebanese government has the ability to control uh, what happens next. We don't know exactly what Hezbollah is planning in the next phase and, and what it's uh, you know what role it's going to play regionally and and what what it's going to say uh, or ask its allies to say uh, uh, you know regarding um, events in the region and what. Iran and, 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 and Saudi Arabia will agree in their ongoing talks. Qaddafi's resignation will might pose the, the crisis and, and just take it out of the equation. But would it guarantee that such a, uh, you know, the crisis will not resume again at, at a later stage? I'm not sure.